And this is the film 65. Gigantic predators hunt the aliens that suffered a wreck. The film starts just like Star Wars. Letters in outer space report that the action unfolds far, far away. It lasts until the camera reaches a planet. It shows the hero, an ordinary Sith Kylo Ren named Mills, sitting with his wife on the shore of the ocean. They admire their daughter playing with the waves, while discussing the fact that the hero is to get off on a long mission to space. They need money to pay for the treatment of their daughter. Before the separation, the man spends time with his daughter, teaching her all kinds of exciting things. The action is transported to the endless vacuum, where spaceships prowl the expanses of the universe. The ship's crew sleeps in cryo capsules. The yakking foreman is not even needed. Mills is the only one on guard. He's a pilot after all. He is awakened from his slumber by an alarm. The ship is approaching the asteroid field. Space boulders clatter against the skin, causing damage to it, while the hero struggles to move the damaged ship sideways. He is forced to make an emergency landing on the nearest planet, losing capsules with sleeping passengers on the way. What matters is that the Furion Riddick, who is more than used to such a landing, is not among the remaining ones. Waking up after a hard landing, Mills notices a piece of metal in his side. After treating the wound with a special glue, he puts on a spacesuit and sets off to inspect the vessel. There are only fond memories left of the passengers, nothing more. Armed in case of first contact, the pilot goes outside. Like Uncle Luke, he also landed in a swamp teeming with disgusting creatures. Mills finds the bodies of dead passengers scattered in creative chaos along the crash trail. Realizing that this is a stain on his service record, the pilot gets upset, then checks the coordinates and sends a 911 distress signal over the air. However, after thinking about it, he looks at the weapon, issues a message that everyone is dead and there is no one to save, after which, having removed his spacesuit in a breathable atmosphere, he wants to shoot himself. Deciding to watch one last video of his daughter, Mills suddenly receives a signal from a survivor. He goes on a search and finds a surviving cryocapsule with a little girl in an alien forest. The hero pulls her out and drags her back to the remains of the ship. Along the way, he stumbles upon the imprint of a huge three-toed paw in the damp earth. As Mills looks around, a voiceover explains, 65 million years ago, an alien ship crashed on Earth. The hapless pilot drags the survivor through the swamp to a ship that provides at least some protection from the hostile native fauna. At dawn, the hero went on a recce. Admiring the prehistoric beauty, he finds the bony remains of a giant creature that died right on top of a geyser. After the hot water ejection, Mill scans the area and realizes that there is a surviving escape pod on the other part of the crashed ship. Yet, the way to it is blocked by various dinosaurs. One of the smaller creatures attacks the pilot. Mill slaughters the lizard with his club, making a minor contribution to further extinction. On the way back, the man hears a noise in the thicket, and its source turns out to be a girl who wakes up. She has been following him, but when Mills spots her, she frightenedly runs away. The pilot rushes after. They roll down the slope together, straight to the carcass of some beast. The smell of carrion draws the attention of another lizard. The heroes opt to run away before it shifts to them. On the ship, the pilot checks the passenger list to find out that the girl's name is Koa. She does not understand him, as she speaks a different language. Mills uses visual art to tell about the rescue module. They will have to get there on foot, through forests teeming with dinosaurs. When the girl asks about her parents, the hero lies that they are on top of the mountain they have to climb. Mills sends a new emergency signal, while Koa watches a video of his daughter. She has been sending messages throughout the entire mission. Then they agree on signs and start cosplaying Joel and Ellie on a challenging journey through an uninhabited terrain full of dangerous creatures. Climbing over a fallen tree, the girl pays attention to the sky. There, against the vast moon, the tail of an approaching comet grows scarlet. Picking some of the local berries, the girl hurls them at Mills, who does not react, preoccupied with looking out for danger. He warns her not to eat unfamiliar fruits and berries. One could get poisoned. Later, he is bitten by an insect, which he smears on his neck with a Herculean slap. Further away, they notice a baby dinosaur stuck in the mire, separated from its congeners. The girl rushes to the rescue and, together with Mills, pulls it out. But you can't escape your fate. While the cub was catching up, a pack of raptors attacked and tore him. Koa screams in terror as the hero grabs and hides her behind a stump to avoid drawing the attention of smaller predators. The hikers make a halt on the banks of a turbulent stream. Mills examines the wound. The flask runs out of water, and he asks the girl to fill it from the river. Along with the water, she brings a flower, which she wants to put in his hair. Mills pulls away, but in the next shot, he proudly flaunts the accessory. Flower falls as he climbs a tree to inspect the surroundings and adjust the course. 
some spiders get on his arm. Trying to shake them off, he loses his balance and, like Winnie the Pooh, falls to the ground, only without reciting a poem. Having twisted his shoulder from the fall, the pilot tries to reset it against a tree, but to no avail. At this time, a pack of local predators sneaks up on the men. Koa helps Mills reset his arm, and the man grabs his rifle right at the supreme moment to shoot the lizards. Yet, there are too many of them. He tells the girl to run away and then throws grenades at them. Once hidden, Koa listens to the sounds of gunfire, not noticing how the flying creatures gather around as vultures. The heroine tries to crawl away, but bumps into the predator she is running away from. They drive her into a fallen tree, creeping closer and closer. Mills appears at the nick of time and multiplies the lizard by zero with a well-aimed shot. The last of them grabs Koa and drags her to the safety of the forest. The pilot follows until they let the girl go, firing shots to scare off the hapless hunters. From the stress she has undergone, the girl is crammed into a corner. The hero fails to speak to her and calm her down, so he simply guards his companion. When it starts getting dark, the man makes a particular whistle with his arms folded, which attracts Koa's attention. With gestures, he teaches her to whistle, just like his daughter. The girl does it in her own way, but succeeds right away. Mills carries the girl on his back. They find a cave to stay in for the night. The pilot checks the navigator and learns that the debris field that caused the crash is not the biggest problem. There is a giant asteroid flying toward the planet, and they will not survive a collision with it. It also turns out that Koa took a disc from the ship with a video message from the hero's daughter, and he doesn't like it. The offended girl turns away, but when Mills starts the tape, she watches the message with a smile, not noticing the adult crying quietly in the distance. At night, the security beacons go off. Waking up, Mills sees that the girl has foam coming out of her mouth, caused by an insect that has climbed into her mouth. He carefully kills the parasite with a shard of beacon, bringing Koa to her senses. Yet, the danger has not disappeared. A huge dinosaur is standing near the entrance to the cave. Mills opens fire, blowing out the beast's eye. The retaliatory attack forces the heroes to sneak deep into the cave, where the predator can't reach them. But the inside is full of smaller lizards, which are also dangerous to humans. The heroes wade through narrow passages in search of a way out. Mills dismantles a manhole cluttered with rocks, while the girl leaves rock art on the walls to the delight of future archaeologists and journalists. When the pilot lowers his arms, the girl cheers him on with shouts. Unable to stand it, the man admits that he lied. Her parents are not waiting for her on the mountain, but Koa doesn't understand the language. Then he shoves a grenade into the rift to cause a detonation. After successfully expanding the passage, Mills gives the girl a couple of grenades just in case, and they crawl down the narrow manhole. The explosion, however, causes the rock to get unstable. The tunnel collapses, separating them. Mills is forced to return. Not knowing what's happened to the girl, he's trying to clear the rubble when he hears her screams and is about to find a way around. But in the darkness, a cunning predator, whom the pilot had earlier scared away with shots, ambushes him. The pilot uses a scanner to spot the beast, but even so, it's too cunning, fast, and dangerous. The dinosaur attacks the man, forcing him to drop his weapon and nearly killing him. With the last bit of strength, Mills reaches for the barrel and shoots the lizard. Meanwhile, Koa makes her way outside. She wanders through the woods and finds a huge tooth stuck in a log, which she smears with poisonous berries. Mills, who has climbed out of the cave, sees a bright fire in the sky. They are hours away from collision with the asteroid. He makes his way through the forest and calls out for the girl. He hears her screaming in the distance. She is attacked by a small dinosaur. Mills runs to the rescue, but gets caught in a bog that sucks him in. Koa, meanwhile, lures the predator into a trap in a dried tree and, after covering the entrance, tosses grenades inside. After the explosion, she hears the screams of Mills, who has been swallowed up whole by the swamp. At the final moment, the girl tilts a branch so that the pilot can get out. He hugs her and thanks her for help, then points to an asteroid in the sky, warning her to hurry. The heroes keep going. As it gets dark, the first meteors cut through the sky. Upon reaching a steep cliff, Mills gives the girl a lift to climb up and tie a rope. She takes her time, making him nervous to wonder if anything might go wrong. When Koa drops the rope, he climbs up next and sees the reason for the delay. She was too diligent about tying the rope. They get to the remains of the ship that broke apart in the crash landing. Mills checks the rescue shuttle systems. They're in working order. But the girl is more concerned about the whereabouts of her parents. She goes out looking and only sees the wreckage. Realizing that the hero has deceived her, Koa yells at him in anger. As the sky lights up scarlet with another meteor burning in the dense atmosphere, Mills confesses that his daughter is dead too, from illness. 
and he wasn't there. He was trying to earn money to cure her. Lest such a fate befalls her too, the pilot promises to bring Koa home. The girl hugs the man. At this time, an unburned meteorite lands in a nearby forest, one of many in the countless retinue of a huge space boulder that is flying to crash into the Earth. Since Bruce Willis has not yet been invented, the heroes are forced to save themselves by jumping into the capsule and preparing for takeoff. Yet other meteorites hit the wreckage of the ship, causing the rescue module to fall from the summit of the mountain. After waking up from the fall, Koa sees streaks of fire in the sky. She wakes Mills, but the module is attacked by a huge Tyrannosaurus. Noticing the rifle lying nearby, the hero detaches himself and runs outside. Picking up his weapon, he leads the lizard away while the batteries are being recharged. Suddenly, another Tyrannosaurus appears to devour the exotic alien human. While the beasts sniff each other out, Koa turns on the projector with a recording of Mills' daughter, diverting the attention of the lizards. The pilot shoots one in the head, killing it, but the other, realizing where the beam of light is coming from, attacks the rescue module. An enraged Mills pursues it, showering it with a succession of shots until the Tyrannosaur falls dead. Discarding his unloaded rifle, he waves to Koa in the cabin, but suddenly notices another predator, the very one he shot an eye out of in the cave. The vicious lizard has come to get even. The man rushes out, trying to get the beast away from the capsule. He sees a field of geysers ahead, and a cunning plan matures in his mind, based on the bones found at the beginning of the film. Mills runs across the field of geysers, luring the beast right to one of them. The plan almost succeeds, but Koa runs out and pierces the side of the raptor with the fang found earlier. In shock, pain, and surprise, the beast roars as it stands still, and a stream of hot water rushes out of the ground, scalding it to death. Having defeated the beast with their wits, the heroes return to the rescue capsule. It takes off just as the giant asteroid enters the atmosphere. Its fall is even visible from orbit, and the aftermath has proven to be phenomenally catastrophic. Once safe, Mills recalls his daughter. Koa, sitting in a nearby chair, takes his hand, smiling through her tears. The capsule hurtles through the black abyss while Armageddon is happening on Earth. The film not only ends with the credits, but also with a retrospective of the changing landscape of the planet. From the fiery hell after the fall, to the permafrost, and then to full-fledged civilized cities.